I'm Austin Lucas, I'm artistic director here at the public, and I have just a couple things to say. First of all, I want to thank everybody involved with the Hunts Point Children Ensemble and the Hunts Point Children's Alliance for Children for welcoming, welcoming us into their home. It has been an extraordinary privilege for the public theater to be able to visit you and be with you over the last couple of years, and the Public Shakespeare Initiative is better and stronger because of our relationship to Hunts Point, and we are looking forward to continuing this as long as the sun shines and the city is here. Um, and uh, the other thing is that we hope in some small way today to return the favor and welcome you to our house. This is where we are most of the time here at the Public Theater. We're delighted to have you here. And here on this stage, we're about to see an extraordinary production of The Tempest. Here on this stage, 44 years ago this month, a chorus line appeared for the first time. Here on this stage, four years ago, Hamilton first met the world. And tonight, here on this stage, we present The Tempest. Thank you. We're not performing The Tempest. No. Um, I'm Eli. Uh, my name is Reese McClellan. We're the co-directors of the Hunts Point Sh Children Shakespeare Ensemble. Um, we have the distinct privilege of being able to work with children. Uh, but along with that privilege uh, comes the fact that they're children and every so often they fall ill or get sick. Uh, so unfortunately today, our um, actor playing uh, King Alonzo, Alyssa Perez, who has put in tremendous, tremendous work, uh, we will not be here today because she is too ill to perform, and we need to make sure to protect the children's safety above all. Um, that being said, that being said, uh, the part of King Alonso tonight will uh, be played uh, by a young lady called Marilyn Gonzalez, who this year, yeah. give it up if you know her, um, who this year has actually been working with us uh, as a creative team intern. She's currently a sophomore at Marymount College. And it's beautiful kismet, really. Uh, it's come full circle because she is actually an alum of this program. Said about 10 years ago, played Rosalind in As You Like It. Went through this whole program, is now studying theatre and drama therapy. And tonight she'll be performing the role of Alonzo. So uh, give it up for her. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show.
Where's the master, Boswain? Then I hear you are Keep it up. You do us. That's the storm. They could be patient. One of the fears. Heads, what cares these wars for the name of king? Took heaven, fence, trouble us now. Good, you remember who thou hast born. None that more love than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence, we will not handle no more. If you cannot give thanks, you've lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischief of the hour. Chili good hearts, our way I say. Down with the top mass. Lower, lower. No, no. A plague upon us howling. They are louder than the weather. Yet again, why do you hear? Shall we give her and drown how you are might to sleep? A pox on your throat, you bawling bastards and terrible dogs. Where are you then? Hey, Kurt! Hey, you, you insolent noisemaker! We all let her face to be drowned then thou art. Set her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off! All lost! To prayers! To prayers! All lost! Mercy on us, we split, we split. Farewell, my wife and children. Farewell, brother. We live! We live! We live! Now, when I give a thousand for the
For me, my library was due to them large enough. Of temporal royalties, he thinks me now incapable. Confederates. So dry his sway with the king of Naples. This king of Naples, being an enemy to me, and veterans, hearkens my brother Sue, which was that he and lieu of homage should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair men with all the honors on my brother, run a treacherous army, lavid one midnight, and faithful to the purpose that Antonio opened the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness the minister hurried thence me and thy crying so. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded wench, my tale provokes that question. They durst not, so dear the love my people bore me. And few they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast, but the very rats instantly had quitted. Then they hoist us to cry to the sea, who roared to us to sigh to the ones whose pity Sighing back did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, what cherubim thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile and fuse it with the fortitude from heaven. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had, and some fresh water that I know when Nepalton Gonzalo, out of his charity, did give us with rich garments linen and stuff. And necessary which since have stood in much of his gentleness. Knowing I love my books, he furnished me from my own library with volumes that I prize above my dukta. Would I might but ever see that man? Now I arise. Here in this island we arrive. And here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than any princess with more time for vainer hours, and tutors not so careful. And heavens thank you for it. But now I pray you, sir. For it still tis beating in my mind, your reason for raising this sea storm. No, thus far forth, by accident most strange, bountiful fortune, now my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. Here, cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep, and give it way. I know thou cannot choose. Come away, servant, come. I am ready now. Approach my Ariel. Come. All hail, great master. Great sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel, and all their quality. Hast thou performed to point the tempest I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ship. Now I'm deep. Now I'm away. So you're dead. In every cabin, I flame the amazement. Sometimes I divide and burn in many places. On the top man, top man, the yard, yard, and bow spring. What I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightning, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclap. More momentary sight of running, were not the fire and cracks of sulfurous rowing. The most mighty Neptune seemed to be sieged and, and make his, his bold waves tremble. tremble. Yea, his dread strike and shake. Why, that's my spirit. What are they here, you save? Not a hair perish. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And, as thou bade me, in troops I have dispersed them about the eye. The king's son, have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sigh. In an odd angle of the aisle, and sitting, his arms in the sad knot. Of the king's ship, see how thou hast disposed. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook, where once thou called me up at midnight to fetch the dew from the still vest Bermudas, there she's hid. The mariners, all under hatches stowed, who with a charm, joined to their suffered labor, I have left to sleep. This was well done, but there's more work. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pain, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet before me. How now? Moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty! Before the time be out, no more! I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, 
serve without or grudge or grumbling. Thou didst promise to bake me a full year. Hast thou forgotten what a torment I defeated? No. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and then be grew into a hoop? No, sir. Thou hast this damned witch Sycorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries do terrible to enter human hearing from our ears. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and for that was the spirit too delicate to act her early in the poor commands. She did confine thee into a cloven pine, within which rift thou did painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she did die, and left thee there, and safe was this island, save for the son she did litter here. Yes, Caliban, her son. Do all thing I say so, he, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. It was by mine art when I arrived, that made it gape the pine, and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurs, I will run the note and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days, I'll free thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go. Make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Awake, dear heart. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Come on, shake it off. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields his kind answer. Tis a villain, sir. I do not love to look on. Well, ho, Caliban, thou earth thou speak. There's wood enough for fed. Come forth, I say. Fine apparition, my queen, Ariel. Hearken thy name. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, come forth. As wicked do as ma'am my mother, brush from and hold some fat, drop on you both. <laughs> my mother, which thou take from me. When thou came first, thou stroked me and made much of me, would give me waters with berries in it, and taught me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burns by day and night. And then I love thee and show thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, Light on you! <laughs> For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was my own king, and here you sign me in this hard rock while you do keep me from the rest of the island. I have used thee, filled as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own self, so thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh ho, oh ho, would it have been done, thou didst prevent me. I had peopled out the isle with calibans. A poor slave, which any print of goodness will not take, being capable of all ill, I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, when thou didst not know thine own meaning, but would gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words, and made them known. You taught me language, my prophet on it, is I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for teaching me your language. Had seen hence. Fetch us the fuel and be quick. Shrug thou malice, if thou neglects or dost thou willingly what I command, I will wrap thee with old cramps, make all thy bones ache, and make thee roar, that beast shall tremble at thy din. No, praise thee. I must obey. His art is of such power, it will control my damned god, Cerebos, and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence.
this music be, in the air or earth? This music crept by me upon the waters. Thence I have followed it, but now tis gone. No, it begins again. drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. What is it? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about. It carries a great form, but tis a spirit. No, wench. It eats and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have. This gallon which thou seest was in the wreck. He has lost his fellows, and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure the goddess on whom these ears attend. Oh, you wonder. No wonder, sir. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak this speech, my eye, where I but words is spoken. How? The best? Where wert thou the king of Naples heard thee? Myself of Naples, whom with mine eyes beheld the king, my father, wrecked. A laugh for mercy. At first sight, they have changed eyes. <laughs> A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that ear I saw, the first that ear I sighed for. Pity moved my father to be inclined my way. I'll make you queen of Naples. Soft, sir. Well, word more. They are both in neither's powers. But this swift business uneasy must I make, lest to light winning make the prize too light. One word more, I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou wouldst put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me, the Lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. Speak not you for him. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. No, I shall resist such, a such entertainment so mine enemy has more power. Make not too rash a trial of him, for he is gentle and not fearful. Silence! One word more of thee, and thou shalt make me chide thee, and not hate thee. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirit is in a dream are all bound up. My father's loss would be but light to me. My, uh, my eye but through my prison once a day. Behold this maid. It works. Come on. <laughs> Thou hast done well. Thou hast done well, fine Ariel. Follow me. Hearken, what else shalt thou do me? Be of comfort. <laughs> My fathers have a better nature, sir, than he appears by speech. Come, follow. But speak not you for him. <laughs> Comes to the entertainer. A dollar. The Lord comes to him. Indeed. 
You have spoken truer than you have purpose. You have taken it wiser than I meant you should. Therefore, Fall. What a specter is he of his tongue? I prithee spare. Resolvent's island seems to be the desert, uninhabitable, and almost inaccessible, yet it must be some tender and delicate temperance. Temperance was a delicate once. The air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and draw in range. Or a perfumed by a fan. Here's everything advantageous to life. True, same means to live. Of that there's none or little. How lust and lusty the grass looks, how green. The garden is indeed tawny. But then I am green in it. But the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond cutting. As many vouched rarities are. <laughs> that our garments being, as they were, drenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their new freshness and gloss, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, wouldn't I say he lies? Aye, or a very faulty pocket up his report. Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first at the marriage of the king's fair daughter, Clarabelle, to the king of Tunis. Tunis was never grateful for such a Clarabelle to the queen. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as when I wear it first at your daughter's marriage? You cram these words into my ears against your stomach and my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there, for coming thence, my son is lost. O oh, thou mine heir of Naples and Milan, what strange fish have made his meal on thee? Sir, he may live, I found thee the surgeon's under him, and ride upon ponder back. He trod the water with enmity, he flung aside, and oar himself with good arms to shore. I doubt not that he came alive to it. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss. Pretty peace. We have lost your son, I fear forever, the fault your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My Lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth like some gentleness, and time to speak it in. You rub the sword when you should bring the plaster. Very well. Pretty, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you, I would have mentioned my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh in your sleep? I am very heavy. All so asleep soon. I wish my eyes would with themselves shut off my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take a rest and watch your safety. Thank you, wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our island? They fell together. As by consent, they drop as by a thunderstorm. What might, really, Sebastian? Oh, what might? My strong imagination sees a crown jumping upon thy head. What art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak, noble Sebastian? Although this Lord have here only persuaded the king his son's alive, tis as impossible as he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clara Bell. She, that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. We will all see swallow, do some cast again, and by the destiny to perform an act, whereof which passage prologue which will come in yours and mine's discharge. How say you? It is true my brother's daughter is queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples, twixt the regions. There is some space. A space with every cubit seems to cry out. There be that one can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Oh, that's your boy the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement? Do you understand me? Me thinks I do. I remember, you did supplant your brother Prospero. True, and look how well my garment sit upon me. But for your conscience? Aye, sir. Where lies that? Twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Millie. Can he be they and melt ere they molest? Here lies your brother. Whom I, with this obedience still, three inches of it could lay to bed forever. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou got melon, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou pays, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you delight to follow on Gonzalo? Oh, but one word. My master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies. 
to keep them living. While we all do here snoring lie, open eyes conspiracy, his time doth take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake! The ladder of both be shut in. Now can you preserve the king? Oh. Oh. Why? How now? Ho! Oh. Awake, why are you drawn? What's Where for thy ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst we stood here, securing your repose, we heard a hollow burst of bellowing, like bulls, or rather lions. Did it not wake you? It struck mine ear most terribly. I, I heard nothing. Oh, twas a gentrifying the monster's ear to make an earthquake. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon mine honor, sir, I heard a humming, and that a strange one too, which did awake me. As mine eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. Lead us off the ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. Prospero, my lord shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son.
but here's my comfort. Do not torment me, oh! What's the matter? Have we doubled here? I have not seen drowning to be afraid of your four legs. Do not the spirits torment me, oh! This is a monster of the eye with four legs. Where did the devil he learn our language? Do not torment me, Prendy. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now. I does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste my bottle. I shall know that voice. It should be he is drowned and these are devil. Oh, the bed thing. Four legs and two voices? A most delicate monster. If all the wine in my bottle will cover him, I will help my ache you. Come, amen, I'll pour some of thy other mouth. Step it out. Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is this is a devil, no monster. I will leave him. Step it out, thou be step it out. Touch me and speak to me, for I am Trickolo. Be not free like good friend Trickolo. If thou be Trickolo, come forth. I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. Any be Triglo's legs, these are they. <laughs> ah, thou art very Triglo indeed. How came to be the seat of his vocab? Can he vet Triglo's? Art thou now John Stefano? I hope art thou now John. Art thou living Stefano to the Apollo scale? Oh, pretty. Does that turn me about? My stomach not constant. That's a brave god that bears celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How didst thou sit? How didst thou hither? To the shore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck. I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Though thou kiss swim like a duck, thou art bed like a goose. Has the stuff in a hast any more of this? The whole book, man. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside, where my wine is How now, Moocap? How does that ache you? Has thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon where the tide was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress have shown me thee. Come on then, thou and swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. The man in the moon, a most poor, credulous monster. I will kiss thy foot, I swear myself thy subject. Come kiss? Look, I'll show thee the best springs, I'll pluck thee berries, I'll fish for thee, and I'll get thee wood enough, a plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A ridiculous monster to make one of a poor drunkard. I pray thee, let me bring thee to where crabs grow, and I, with my long nails, will dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. Bring thee the clustering filberts, and sometimes get thee young scambles from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I prithee, lead the way well, without any more talking. <laughs> Trigolo, the king, and all our company else being drowned. We will inherit here. Here, bear my bottle, with we'll some by and by again. A howling monster, a drunken monster. For a while, master, for a while, for a while.
this my mean task would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never like executor. I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you sit down, I'll very long dwell. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lady by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to it. Poor worm, thou art infected. <sighs> <laughs> you look weary. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, what is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broken your head to say so. Admired Miranda, indeed the top of admiration, worth what's dearest in the world. Oh, you, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my own sex. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can imagination shape a form beside yourself to like God. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. When I first saw you, did my heart fly to your service? And for your sake am I this patient's log man. Do you love me? O oh, heaven, O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound. Beyond all limit of what else in the world, I do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. Very counsel, this most rare affection.
Brain like us, stay toddies. Bring to me, servant monster. When I bid thee. How does it, Arnold? Let me lick thy shoe. Ew! I'll not serve him. He's not valiant. Thou wise, most ignorant monster. Lo, how he mocks me. Will thou let him, my lord? Trickle up, keep a good time your head. But poor Moth is my subject. And he should not suffer indignity. I thank my noble lord. Will thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Mary, will I kneel or repeat it? I will stand. <laughs> <laughs> it's also Trickle. Why, as I told thee, I'm subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest! Thou liest, thou dusty monkey! Thou! I would my valiant master would destroy thee! I do not lie! Trickle if you interrupt, if you interrupt the monster in his tail by this hand, I will supplant some of your teeth. Why? I said nothing. Monster, no more. <sighs> Proceed. I say by sorcery, he got this iron from me. He got it. If thy greatness will, we'll defend it on him. For I know if thou dares. But this thing <laughs> dares not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How shall this be compassed? Yet can that bring you to the party? Yea, yea, my lord, I'll yield to thee a sleeper, thou may knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pie can be this, thou scurvy patch? I do receive thy greatness. Give him blows. Shrink a lot, run into no further danger. Interrupt mustard one word further, and by this hand. <laughs> By this hand, I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stock fish of thee. Why, what did I? I said nothing. I'll go further off. Did thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Did I so take thou that? As you like this, give me the light another time. I did not get the light out of your wits and hearing too. A pox in your bottle, a murder in your monster, and a devil take your fingers. Thou form out with your tail. Pretty step further off. Why, as I told thee before, touch a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou may break him, having first seized his books, or with a log, batter his skull, or punch him with a stake, or cut his wheezing with thy knife. Remember to possess his books, for without them he's but a shot as I am. Nor hath not one spirit to command. Monster, I will kill this man. I will be king and trickle up, and thyself shall be viceroy. Excellent. This will I tell my master. Thou makes me merry. Let's be jockin'. Come on, trickle, let us sing. Flat of me, scout of me, scout of me, flat of me, God is free. That's not the tune. <laughs> what is this same? This is the tune of our catch, played by a picture of nobody. If thou be a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou be a devil, Take out his thou list. Oh, forgive me my sin. Art thou a fear? No, monster. Not I. Be not a fear. The aisle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that if I then had wake after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then in dreaming, the clouds we thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me, that when I wake, I cry to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. Mm -hmm. The sound is going away. It's following after more work. Leave my 
Compensation makes amends, for I have given you a third of mine own life, or that for which I live. Oh, Ferdinand, she will outstrip all praise. I do believe it against an oracle. Then, as my gift, take thou my daughter. She is thine own. Sit down and talk with her. Well, Ariel, my industrious servant, Ariel. Walk with my potent master. Here I am. Go, bring the rabble quickly to this place, and incite them to swift motion. For I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. 
presently? I with a twink! Before you can say come and go, and breathe twice, and cry so so, each one, tripping on his toe, will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master? No? Dearly, my delicate Ariel, do not approach the daughters hear me call. Well, I can see. Look, that be true. I warrant you, sir. Well, Ariel, no tongue, all lies, be silent. and messenger am I, but see to attend with her sovereign grace here on this grass plot in this very place. To come and support her peacocks by man, a portrait series her to entertain. Our little life is rounded with a sleep. 
Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weaknesses. If you be pleased, retire to myself, and there repose for a turn or two I walk. To still with my beating mind. We wish, wish you peace. Come with the thought. I thank thee, Ariel. Come. Thy thoughts I creep to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I, my commander. Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, sir. They were red hot with drinking. So full of valor that they smoked the air for breathing in their faces. Beat the ground for the kissing of their feet. Yeah, they were bending towards their project. Then I beat my tabor. Like an on that clock, they pricked their ears. Advanced their eyelids, lifted their noses as if they smelled music. So I charmed their ears that calf like they my loin followed. Th through tooth briars. Sharp furzies. Pricking girls and thorns which entered to their fail shins. At last I left them in the filthy mantle pool beyond your cell. They were dancing up to their chins. That the foul lake or stunk their feet. <laughs> <laughs> this was well done, my bird. The trumpery in my house. Go bring it hither. I go, I go, I go. A devil, a poor devil, of whose nature nurture can never stick, of whom my pains humanely taken, all, all lost, quite lost. I will plague them all, even to roaring. Come, hang them on this line. Be 
a head. My charms crack not. My spirits obey. Say how fares the king and his followers. Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge. Just as you left them. Ah, uh, prisoner, sir. In the lime grove which was a friend yourself, they cannot bush till you release them. The king, his brother, and yours abide, all three distracted. And the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. <laughs> but chiefly, him that you turned to, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo, his tears run down his beard like winter's drop from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works it that if you now beheld him, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir. Right, human. And mine shall. Hast thou, which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, that relish all the sharp with passion as they be kindlier moved than thou art, and though with their high wrongs, I am struck to the quick, and yet with my nobler reason, against my fury, do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the soldier for my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go, release the Mario. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves. And indeed I understand to print this book, to chase the ebbing Neptune and to fly him when he comes back. You dummy puppets, that by moonshine the green tower ringlet to make wear off, it will not bite. And you, whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice the solemn curfew. By whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have be dimmed the noontide sun. Call forth the music's wind, twixt the green sea, and the azure box that bring war. To the dread rolling thunder have I given fire. And with the joe stout oak with his own bow. The strong base promontory have I made shake. And by the spurs puffed up pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oped and led him forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear of joy. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury in certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever promise sound, I'll draw my book. There stand, where you are all supposed to. The charm dissolves the space. Their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle the clearer reasons. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonzo, use me and my daughter. You, brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse in nature, whom with Sebastian would hear have killed her king. I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me. Ariel, fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell. I will this case me and myself present as I were sometime million. Ariel, thou shalt be free. Asleep under the hatchet, 
the master and the bosun being awake and, and forced them to this place. I drink the air before me and return, for air your pulse twice beats. Oh, torment, trouble, wonder and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power got us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wrong and Duke of Men and Prospero, to thee and thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou be he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood. This must crave, and if this be at all, a most strange story. The Duke them I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me of thy wrongs. How should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I will not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends, all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded to buck his highness's frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tale. The devil speaks in him. No, for you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and do require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou be Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast meet us here, whom three hours since were wrecked upon this shore, where I have lost my dear son Ferdinand. Irreplaceable is the loss. And Patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not saw her hope of a soft grace for the like loss. I have her sovereign aid. I rest myself content. You the like loss. For I have lost a daughter. Oh, a daughter. Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. But how to where you have been jostled from your senses. Know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thus worth the million, who most strangely upon this shore where you were wrecked, was landed to be the lord on it. Welcome. This sells my court. Pray you, look in. And since you have given me my dukedom again, I will requite you with the wonder to content you as much as we might do some. Sweet lord, you play me false. No, my dear slob, I would not for the world. Yes, for a square king kingdoms you would wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say, how thus how came here? Oh wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is. Oh brave new world that has such people in it. Tis new to thee. <laughs> is she the goddess that has severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal, but by immortal providence, she is mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renowned, but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life, and a second father, this lady makes him to me. I am hers. Look down, you God, another couple drop a blessed crown. I say amen, Gonzalo. Rejoice beyond the common joy. And one way is you clear about her husband fight that soonest, and Ferdinand, his brother, found the wife where he himself was lost. Prospero his dukedom, and a lost isle, and all of us ourselves, where no man was his own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so, amen. Oh, look, sir, look, sir. Here's more of us. What is the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company. The next hour ship, which with three glasses, is the air split, 
is tight and yard are maybe rigged as when we first put out to sea. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. My tricksy spirit. This is a strange amaze as air men trod, and there is in the business more than nature, whatever conduct of be. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not invest your mind with beating on the strangers of this business. Come, hear the spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. How fares my gracious sir? There be some missing of your company, some few old lads, that you remember not. <gasps> Every man should follow the rest, and let no man take care for herself. For all is my fortune, Caraggio, fully but to Caraggio. If these be true spies which I wear in my head, here's a goodly sight. Oh, Shadowblush, these be brave spirits indeed. How fine my master is. I'm afraid he'll chastise me. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, at once so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs. These three have robbed me, and this dummy devil, for he's a bastard one, have plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own, but this thing of darkness, I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. It's not this the font, Stefano, my drunken chef? And Trinculo, it's reeling right. How came thou in this pickle? I've been such pickle since I saw you last that I feel we're never out of my bones. Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, catch me not. I am that, <laughs> I am that Stefano, but a cramp. This is a strange thing <coughs> ere I looked on. Go, Sirah, to my son, take with you your companions. <laughs> and until you look to be until you look to be pardoned, trim a hand on me. Aye, that I will. I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to, away. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night. And in the morn, I'll take you to your ship, and so to Naples, where I dream of seeing your dear beloved, so, no, the nuptial of our dear beloved solemnized, and then retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I will promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sail so expeditious that thou shalt catch a royal fleet far off. My errand, chick, that is thy charge. Them to the elements, be free, and fare thou well. Please you, draw near. Release me from my bands, 
with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours must fill my sails, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes pardon me, let your indulgence set me free. Thank you.